Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of The Complete Little Nemo, 1905 to 1927. It says complete, I assume it is complete. I haven't gone through every single page, so who knows, by Winsor McKay. Obviously quite a few years ago, Tashin, Tashin Books, and there's the name of the person. That, it is really heavy, you can see it's a large, large book, 704 pages, colour throughout, as well as some black and white, of course, I mean, got... 130 odd pages about his life as well, done in a very interesting style, sort of done as a newspaper, which is very nice. And there's all the sections there, you can see there, 19, goes through, you've got like the films, you've got all the various musical, McCann and the War, moving comics, and obviously he's done loads of other ones other than Little Nemo. So you've got, so there, this one here, you've got examples of Little Sammy Sneeze. Also got lots of examples of the newspapers of the time as well, which is just fascinating. Obviously the illustrations. A Pilgrim's Progress as well. Uh, collective Dreams. You've got uh, Dream of Rare Bit Fiend. Absolutely glorious. Absolutely beautiful because they're really enormous. Now, I don't think they're as big as the original sort of Sunday papers or whatever. They were. I think it was the Sunday papers, wasn't it? So it's... Uh, I assume that they were much larger than this. I haven't got an example, so I can't compare it, but I guess that they... But you've got some lovely original inked pages. Again, it would be lovely if it was actually original size. But still, not complaining. I think, to be honest, if it was any larger than this, it would be impossible to lift. And that's the trouble with lots of these books. I absolutely love them, but look at that architecture. Designing Slumberland. That must have been amazing to go through there. And you've got lots of other illustrations. You've got examples there of yet more things of obviously films you got prepare for war obviously that was the war period and you got again more examples of uh, storyboards there just staggeringly brilliant i think it's just this book is full of and it's about 130 pages before you actually get to little nemo let's just get to little nemo i'm not going to show obviously very many examples but there's an example there it is just so odd i love the panels the way it's stretched downwards like that and that was the thing that was Quite, they did vary the panels quite a lot. I just love the examples there, a little slump there again. I think it's beautiful. I can go through this. Now, it's not a sort of book I think you would go through in order. I just, maybe, maybe some people have, but I certainly well, don't think I'll ever do that. But it's one you can really just dip into and just think, wow, just beautiful, beautiful artwork. And normally, of course, it ends with him falling out of bed or something. You know, you've got that sort of sequence there and then suddenly you're sort of in, inside a dream. Sometimes it shows, obviously, the start bit is going up to the bed. But generally, it always has him falling out of bed or just waking up in a particular position, depending on, obviously, what was like this one, an acrobat. I mean, just the panel structure is just so good. Just so. And also, I love the lettering as well at that time. And also, of course, you've got all the fashions appears and really quite sometimes very unusual shapes of, of people as well and like dragons and things. this is covers everything just such a powerful book now the pages i think they're not really excessively glossy which is good you wouldn't want it glossy i think it needs this sort of now it's not i don't know what paper it is it's very hard to say i'm not in i can't really say at all but it's not glossy paper but nor is it matte paper it's not a sort of but it's a matte approach and it's just beautiful. And it's just, and like I say, after a while, it is. Now, the lettering doesn't change particularly much. Obviously, it's handwritten. It's not particularly sort of like Will Eisner or something where you've got suddenly, or maybe other people have gone for really weird lettering. It's very basic lettering all the way through. But I still love the way he sort of uses the word balloons still. I think it's absolutely, and also it's quite, the stories are actually very good. Also, perspective is always staggering. And just plain old sometimes, jumping at how it all sort of bounces from... But, oh, I love the Christmas ones as well. There's quite a few Christmas ones. So you've got the dates here. It's Now, they've got here Sunday, like December the 6th, 1925. You can see it at the top. And that's useful. Now, it would have been nicer if it had been on the other side. It's crunched in the, in the gutter, of course. Sometimes it's very hard. You have to really look for that. But it's still... I think the Christmas ones are great. You see a Christmas one there. You can see suddenly the colouring change. Obviously the colouring, the other ones, you've got more sort of standard colouring. But with the Christmas one, you end up with more reds and those sort of colours that give that sort of Christmassy feel. And they're just beautiful. Beautiful little Christmas stories. 
Now, quite often the certain characters appear. Now, I don't know if the same characters, I think sometimes you see similar sort of characters appearing, but it's not uh, always the same cast. But there are, there's some, I think, run through it. And also you sort of often meet like, princesses and things in these dreams as well. I think they're very similar as well, the characters that appear goes to different places. I assume obviously Slumberland. Wherever Slumberland, maybe there is a princess of Slumberland. But I guess, I'm just going through some of the things. I guess they are the same. I just don't want to turn around and say, yes, they are the same, when maybe they're not. And someone will say, no, 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 no. That is not the same princess as the other one. But some of the characters definitely do sort of persist, obviously develop. But also Little Nemo changed over time, of course. I mean, you're talking 1905, that's 22 years producing these and the last one I guess is obviously going to be and the, the images just really get quite complex at times not always but it's still all the way through and then it gets all the way through to the back and you've got the last one and the last one is dated January the 9th 1927 I'm alive it's a sort of um, well snowman a snowman there you obviously uh, just uh, so anyway it's a dream of course but still oh there yeah. This is weighs a ton, as I said. McKay was one of the most US, I mean, really, really did create a vast amounts of artwork. There are lots and lots of other books as well, McKay, uh, McKay as well. And Little Nemo, whether this is the best one, I know there's been quite a few versions over the years. I'm not going to turn around and say this is better than the one that was from XYZ, because I can't say I haven't got them, so I can't compare them three or four or whatever i know there has been a number of editions of these sort of complete collections but this is still for me and it's reasonably priced as well so if you want to get it it's quite it's expensive i'm not saying it's the most the cheapest of books but still for a huge book like this i mean it is massive you know it's i think the price is still reasonably okay i love it always love little nemo it's one of those ones like i say i will dip into and enjoy I think it's very nice quality book and is really worth checking out it's certainly if you're into the sort of like 1900s 1920s 1915 that sort of period of comics I think this book is a, a must-have but I think if you're just into comics I think this is also a must-have even then it's totally recommended brilliant book even if it does quite a ton and I'm feeling like I can't hold it much longer <laughs>